it work all this time because I had I had problems getting the rigid body to work at all with my character, but I've solved those problems now, and so now I've switched to the rigid body, which is part of the physics system, so now everything the physics system can do, my character can do as well, and I've used that to uh, do a lot of cool stuff. Um, and so I can show off some of that cool stuff, and what I want to do is create a whole new level, actually, that shows off that, shows off that cool stuff. So I'm going to start, file, new scene, create a new level. Uh, when I create a new level for energy hook, there's a few components that it always needs to have in it. It doesn't need, just FYI, it doesn't need the regular camera. I've got my own my own camera that I use. Uh, camera main, this guy. And uh, usually when I get started making a making a level, uh, I put in just a big floor by taking a cube, um, making it plenty big. Try that. Thousand meters in each direction, kilometer by kilometer. And uh, oh, sorry, I did that wrong. I want to put it at zero, zero, zero. I want the scale to be a thousand in each direction. And uh, okay, so now we have our cube in the center of the universe. I'm going to move it down half a meter, and that way the ground plane, because it's because the center is in the middle of the cube and it's a meter thick, this puts this will put the ground plane exactly at zero. Um, and now I'll put my character in the scene. Swing character. I've got a prefab for her. Now she's in the scene. Um, actually, let's let's take that out again. When you drag, if you drag somebody into the scene window, it sort of automatically detects their height and usually puts them in where you want them. Let's see how that did. So she's a little, she's actually way above the ground right now. Didn't need to be that high. Let's bring her down. Um, a directional light always helps to start off with. And I've got UI stuff and a bunch of other stuff that every level needs in a prefab I call level settings. Put that there. Then there's a couple extra components that every one of my levels needs or things start crashing. One is a uh, one is a trigger to detect when you've sort of fallen out of the fallen too far down, so it can respawn you. That's uh, I call that. I keep these in my sort of game mechanics section. I call that the uh, respawn trigger. We'll set it pretty low, so if you walk off the edge of the world, you can fall a ways. Um, and then the other thing. I put in, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the way this works at one point, but right now, if you are standing on the ground and you swing, it uses this swing adjustment plane to, um, to sort of pull you up and make sure you don't, you don't bounce, bounce against the ground. And uh, so levels that have a couple different heights doesn't work too well with. I know how I'm going to fix that, I just haven't done it yet. So anyways, but that's, uh, that should be everything, I think. Let's see if I'm forgetting something. Run it up. Uh, didn't give me any didn't give me uh, too many errors, except this, I don't know what the deal is with this look rotation one. So yeah, one thing I did is uh, she leans when she's uh, turning now. It's hard to tell that's what she's doing in this empty level, but she is. And so that's that. So. I can now start working on making some stuff to show off the uh, movement tech. I'm going to switch over to the website now and see if anybody has any questions. Um, and looks like no, no questions so far. So I will keep going. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to make some assets in SketchUp to bring in here. Um, uh, I could just take some cubes and tilt them. Um, to make some slopes, but I think it would be a lot cooler um, to do that to do that in SketchUp and make some actual geometry that, that kind of looks like is a, is maybe evocative of something. Um, so uh, yeah, let's. Uh, so here I am in SketchUp, my favorite modeling package because SketchUp, unlike say Blender or Maya or Max, SketchUp is kind of psychic. It, it feels like it feels like most of the time you do something in SketchUp and it just knows what you want and uh, 
you know, in other modeling programs I've used, um, I don't have that feeling. I say that and then immediately it's not doing what I want. Yeah. But I want to I want to create some kind of uh, hexagonal surface here, so I'm going to um, break this up. Not yeah. Move its parts around. Totally how I expected it to work. I want to grab that point. Yeah, that's great. I say, uh, I say that it's psychic, and then it's uh, it's not being psychic for me. There, yeah, that's what I want to do. Something like that. And let's lift that up. Oh, let's delete that line that I put. That that line I put in the middle was just for guideline purposes. I'm far from a SketchUp master, by the way, but I can at least get around with it and make stuff happen. Um, and then let's um, take that top surface and scale it. scale it around the center. Make a sort of pyramid. One of these buttons does what I want. Is it Alt, Shift, Command, whoops, Control, there it is. That's what I want. Right, let's scale that even farther in. And then uh, let's build something there, and uh, I think that's a good start. Just to just to make us make some shapes that we can make some shapes, some slopes that we can play on. And they're all slopes. They're slopes of various different angles. I'd kind of like I kind of like some shallower slopes though. Um, so, but I'll do that. I'll do that in a bit. I'll make another uh, creation in a bit that has some shallower slopes, and um, maybe these will be like buildings of the future, weird, some weird sort of postmodern geometry. Um, a guy who's been doing some level design work on the side that may or may not make it into the game has been showing me some postmodern architecture ideas, and so I'm a little inspired by his stuff. That's Keegan O'Rourke, um, and so I'm going to save this out. I have a directory for source assets here. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So, um, we're going to call this. Um, hexagonal Arcology. And that saves the file, but in SketchUp format, the important thing is to export it into a f format that Unity can read. We do that with a DAE. Um, there's two different ways to do that. One is you can export it here from from uh, a, a, from straight from straight from SketchUp, but sometimes that's inefficient. It makes inefficient models. There's a more inefficient tool called PlayUp that you can install onto SketchUp that makes more efficient models, but it also often uh, messes up the textures. So I use I use this one until until I decide, hey, I really want, would like this particular model to be more efficient. Um, and uh, putting that in my current directory that I'm working out of. Old 
directory for SketchUp assets. I typically may have, have been making a new folder for these. Um, so it doesn't uh, doesn't accidentally share materials with something else and make it so when I change a material on one, it changes the material on both. Okay, so um, you know one thing I didn't check before I did all this was scale. I don't think this is as big as I intended it to be. I want it to be pretty huge. Um, It's about 30 meters across. That sounds big. It's actually not going to seem that big once we have it in the game. So I'm going to double that. Gonna take the whole thing, scale it up. Um, there, that's two times according to here. And I'm going to move it back. So when we rotate it in in the engine. Um, it'll, it will, uh, let's actually let's line it up with that zero axis. So when I rotate it in the engine, it'll rotate fairly kind of in place, instead of around a corner. Um, okay. Save it again, export it again, and let's go over to Unity, and it should pull that in. We go into look in our SketchUp directory. Um, we should see a new hexagonal arcology folder with the new asset. So, um, I, if you use a scale factor of 0 0.02, that seems to convert one meter of SketchUp distance into one meter of unity di distance. Um, I, I, I arrived at that number by trial and error. I don't know if it's actually technically correct. Um, and something we always I always need are colliders. That's what makes it collidable and makes it so you can walk on it. And light map UVs makes it so we can light the thing. And once we've done all that, we can bring that into the game. And uh, it, it's worthwhile making a prefab of these things, but I'm just going to dive in and start playing on it right now, see how that works. So that's uh, that's smaller than I expected. It's as if it didn't either didn't save. It doesn't look 60 meters tall to me. But anyway, so there's the slopes in action. That's a pretty steep wall, so she doesn't even. She, just, she doesn't even think she's standing on it. She's just sort of sliding down it. So that's cool, but yeah. Let's see if changing it, if changing the size over back in SketchUp makes it bigger, or if it's not saving for some reason. Let's scale it up two times again. Can t just type numbers in. Okay, go back to Unity, and that should get bigger, and it did. Alright, so that's, now we're talking. 